talk to me about this record, man. We're you're seven albums in, and you're still able to. Iration is still able to evolve and change and grow. How important is it to be able to do that seven records in? I think it's the most important thing. Um, just as an artist, and if you, <clears throat> I think if you value, you know, creating music as as an act, as you know, expression as art, I think it's number one. I think that's the number one priority is to grow. Sure. Uh, I think if you, it's like they say in, in football, if you're if you're not if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. You know, and it's. And I feel like if you're not involved in evolving, then you're devolving. So very true. Um, I think for us, it's, it's, it keeps it keeps everything fresh, it keeps the band um, focused. I think it makes the live show more interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it's just tied to so many things. I think you know at this point, maybe, you know maybe maybe the pursuit of evolution and in, in the history of the band is maybe. You know, led us to some places that our fan base were, were not necessarily ready to go to, or, or or maybe maybe was you know it led us astray slightly in some of the records. But I think now where we are now, I think we're still focused, and I think that we're we're writing the best music that we've ever re- we've ever done. So I mean, you know, I think it's ultimately, I think. You know, I think we we understand now what our sound is, where we are as a band, and and, uh, it's just a little bit, everything's a little bit clearer. Sure. And and how much of that is being able to, because aside from one record, you guys have done everything pretty much on your own, through your own label with Three Prong. Um, You did one record with Law Records, I think it was, but for the most part, you've done this all through your own label. Um, how much of that has to do with being with doing it through your own label, and is that why you guys continue to do it that way? Yeah, I think, you know, when we started the band, I think there was maybe, a, you know, a little bit of uh, interest in maybe, you know, looking for major labels, and, mm-hmm. you know, we had discussions with major labels, and there was interest in, in things like that, and it ended up just being... You know, through our own decisions and our management, it just came down to us feeling like we, the way that the music music world and the business was shifting, that it just made more sense for us to, to kind of go on, go on our own and do it independently and work with our own label and uh, just kind of hold on to our music. You know, and the most valuable thing you have as a musician or as a band is, is your music. You know, I'm sure. Um, I think. You know, whenever you do decide to, to turn it over in a in a major label deal, it's usually a 360 or something that has to do with giving up a large portion of the music. And mm-hmm. I think we've always wanted to hold on to that. And so, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. I think that, that's been a big part of it. I think just being able to, to be as creative and go and do the things that we really want to do and make the music that we want to do without having to fit it into an you know, ideal of what somebody else thinks it should be. I think there's been... Yeah, and speaking of doing everything your own way, it's it's really cool. In the last couple months, you you, you guys started doing the podcast, the Uplifter podcast, which is freaking awesome. When you guys decided, to, definitely, man. When you guys decided to do that, was that because the pandemic hit and COVID was was really starting to become a thing, and you know, you guys kind of needed a way to really stay engaged with the fans and, and stay out there. What made you guys decide to do that? That's a hundred percent what it is. I mean, we, you know, some people look at the pandemic and, you know, as a band, it's, it's, I was saying earlier, it, it feels like, you know, you're, you're a basketball player or a boxer that you're, you're right. My, you're right handed, your right hand tied to your hip, you know, and, mm-hmm about live music you're kind of for, forced to go to your to your offhand and um it forced us to be creative and find new ways to connect and, and that's what just you know the, the result of that which gotcha. it initially started with us doing a lot a live stream zoom meeting and it kind of evolved into us just deciding that the podcast is the best way to kind of get the information out there and get you know our conversation the 
meat of what we're what we're doing was in the conversation, and uh, yeah, that kind of gave gave way to the uplifter, and it, it's a great, it's it's fun, it's positive, it's funny. Mm-hmm. You know, we try to keep it light and loose, and uh, we break down songs uh, off the new record. We kind of do a thing where we really dive deep into each song, the process, the songwriting, the production side of it, and um, the meaning, and then we kind of go into a general topic. Okay. So there's, there's lots of different things that we've been doing with it, but we've, you know, we've had guests. We've had Eric Rockmani from Revolution. We've had some some other friends, and uh, yeah, it's just been a really cool opportunity. We just look at it as an opportunity to kind of grow mm-hmm. our connections and grow branches of iration into different into different facets, as opposed to just kind of stagnating and and uh, kind of sitting on our sitting on our hands for uh, the entire pandemic. Yeah, because you guys are such a such a like you guys are such a good live band, and you guys are such a you know when it comes to playing live, such a the performances are so good, the shows are so good. I've seen you guys live a couple times here in Indy. I mean, how creative do you guys have to get during the pandemic to really keep going and really you know kind of keep the ball rolling? Because it's it's not easy when it comes to releasing music during a pandemic, because you guys can't tour on it. So, I mean, how creative do you guys have to get when it comes to the album release and everything? Well, I mean, that, 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 that's that been one, uh, like I said, it's been one benefit is, is us kind of having to, usually when we put an album out, we go straight on tour. Yeah. So, you know, the album comes out within a month or so, you're on the road pushing it. Um, and it's a kind of a built-in way to, you know, push an album. Mm-hmm. This time, we don't have that. We don't have that luxury. And when it came down to it, we were like, well, <laughs> should we keep the date that we have? Should we go ahead with it? And we all were just like, you know what? Yeah, like, you know, people need the music. And it's worked. I think it's worked out for us. You know, I think being able to be involved in the marketing more, you know, and have our yeah. hands on, being a lot more hands on with all the aspects be just be more present for those things because usually you're on the road, you're getting emails and you're like in the middle of a tour, it's really hard to kind <laughs> yeah. of take your tour b- tour brain or your tour hat off and go into marketing mode and mm-hmm. build into like you know, 65 emails and go, you know, oh, let's break this down and I need to jump on a call and do this video, film some stuff and blah, blah, blah. And it's like now that we're, you know, we're not, Tied, tied up with all of our, you know, daily tour stuff. It's easy to, it's easier for us to kind of be involved in all the things. So we're getting these, you know, lyric videos, music videos. Um, we're really able to be in on the creative side of those, as well as the creative side of all the artwork and the marketing uh, plan behind the record. And so I think, you know, it's, 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 it's a trade-off. And I think ultimately what's crazy about this album is that we wrote it obviously pre-pandemic, and mm-hmm. all the songs and messages and the songs and the album in general are so tied message-wise to what's going on right now that it it almost feels like it's you know de- <laughs> like destiny in, in a way yeah. where it's like people really we, this album was meant to be released right now or during this time because even just the, the two singles that we put out are. Or, and, and you know, coasting coming out soon after. It's, it's, yeah. They're just so relevant to what's happening right now about being present, being in, living in the right, you know, the right now, looking at, appreciating all the things that are surrounding you in nature and all the simple things in life in general. And yeah. so, I think you know, it's been although it's been hard to not be able to tour and have that aspect of things. It's also been. I think a net. We're trying to we're trying to make it a net positive for the band and for the business of the band. Yeah, and with Coastin, dude, like with this record, especially this record, I I can just I can sit back, turn it on, light up a bowl, sit back and just enjoy it. It's just it <laughs> feels good listening to this record, and it's, it's awesome. definitely man. It's. It's so perfect, and all of your records have been that way, but this one especially, like you said, with Right Now, this is a record that we all needed 
right now is something like this. But how do you, when you look at the final product, how do you feel about it? What does it say about iration right now? And I guess, how do you feel like it measures up to, you know, hotting up stuff like that? Well, I think it's, I think it's the most cohesive album that we put out. Yeah. Maybe since Time Bomb. Um, just as far as the cohesive sound, the cohesive thought process, the writing process, the whole thing started and uh, started and finished with, you know, with the eyes on the prize, essentially. And, you know, all the other albums that we've done, it's crazy, but almost every album since Time Bomb has had some sort of weird event happening during that time that kind of made it what it is. So automatic. We worked. We were. We're trying to make more of a rock-heavy album. Um, we worked with Lincoln Parish and Kids Elephant, and then at, right after we kind of finished recording that, Kai, our other singer from that period of time, left the band, and so that threw a wrench into our whole scenario. Me having to go cut, recut vocals on songs, and so we didn't have like a giant portion of songs with Kai's vocal on it when he was leaving the band. Right. So that was one thing, and then right after that, we, you know, with Hot Enough, we were transitioning to working with a different producer and transitioning to having, like, a Brown in the band. So that Hot Enough was a learning process, and we were really working on a tight schedule. So we'd been, because of Kai leaving the band, it had been three years since we'd put out an album, so we were really working through that on a, right. on a deadline, and that ended up, you know, we ended up only putting out nine songs, but... You know, it, it was a learning experience, and then the, with the self-titled, it was just us really getting into a groove with songwriting um, with, our, with our co-writer and producer, King David, and we wrote that over two years, and that, that album was, a, you know, we consider it self-titled just because it was it's so eclectic, mm-hmm. and it's like all the things that we've done previous in one, in one record, and I think this record was the first time where we got in there after we started writing and we started feeling a vibe that was like let, this, let's stay with this it was chill out and then the song Zen Island and we were like let's just try and stay in this vibe and try and stay in, and focus on the feel of the song and they, they, we want them to feel good so like when you say that you write up a bowl listen to the album and it feels good like that often because that's exactly what we were trying to do it's like awesome more than anything, we were trying to make the song, the song feel good and feel right. And I think that was the goal of this album. And I think that's why, what makes it feel cohesive, makes it have feel like you go on a little bit of a journey. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that's why we called it Coasting. It's because it's like we want, we want you to sit back and go on, go on a ride, you know. And, and that's what the whole you know, vibe of the album is. Yeah, definitely. And, I mean, I, it's... Contact High is one of my favorite ones, but If You Only Knew is also really, really cool. It's got almost like a like a jazzy type feel to it, kind of, you know. Yeah. And um like like you said, it's 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 eclectic. there's a lot of different styles. It's eclectic and all kinds of stuff. But that song in particular, did that song just kinda of come out or is that a I mean Stylistically, there's a lot of different things going on in different parts of the record. Yeah. That song really stands out. Where did that song come from? That song came from a session where uh, we wrote in Santa Barbara. We were just what we were generally doing is getting together um, in groups, um, as just as many of us could be there, and we were just writing, trying to come up with beats, basically, and, and chords and, and music first and foremost, and Fields, you know, that's like sure. I said when we were focusing on fields, we we're focusing on on you know just beats that felt felt good. So we were just had our instruments and we were you know kind of starting with some chords and moving and we kind of we came up with that that song uh, was the biggest thing about it was the big line kind of going on the hook mm-hmm. where it goes and it goes up that kind of jazzy scale. Um, and when, at, when we did that, we were all, I was like, uh, I really like that. That's really cool. And then um, I think I, I kind of came up with that hook and came up with the, the feel of it being kind of an jazzy R&B type uh, throwback almost. 
Um, and we got Junior from Common King, King the Hook, mm-hmm. who's probably one of the best vocalists, you know, anywhere in 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 the, in the genre that we are in. He's he's incredible. I mean, he's just an incredible singer. So we had him. Uh, we got him in at East West in Los Angeles, <laughs> and he was able to do that in one day, and it was wow, just awesome. Like watching him work, and and it just made the song that much more interesting. You know, it's got. Michael Brown and I kind of, I'm singing the verse and Michael Brown's, you know, doing all of his background stuff and we're, mm-hmm. you know, just letting, letting Junior like carry the hook and it's, I really love that song too. Yeah. I mean, that's one of my favorite songs on the album. Yeah. Um, it always it has been from the beginning and, and uh, I love the way that it sounds and the way that that, that feels as well. That's just awesome. Yeah, man. And again, the record overall, just from in in so many ways, it just feels good. Um, but the rest of 2020, everything's up in the air. I know you have the, the Coast and Summer Tour and all that stuff planned. Those had to get postponed, which sucks for fucking everyone. But what's 2020 looking like for you guys? Just kind of sitting tight and just kind of watching, seeing how things evolve and when you can get back out or the record release is July 10th, obviously. So I think two weeks from Friday, two weeks from tomorrow. But um, what's the rest of the year looking like for you guys? I mean, you, you kind of said it. It, it is just a lot of sitting tight. Uh, you know, we, we're 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 already in the process of looking at next year and what we're going to do tour wise. Uh, starting to set that up just because you know this year is basically washed as far as yeah. touring goes. There might be there might be some opportunities to play some shows that we're talking about mm-hmm. um, in different settings and kind of unique settings. We're doing a live we're doing a live stream. Uh, we're really trying to, you know, find new ways to do it, to, to reach out, to create, to put live music in front of people. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, 2020 for right now is just kind of a wait and see, not, not to quote our own song, but it's kind of a wait, <laughs> a wait and see for us. And it's, it's, you know, once we see what starts happening with the general public, I know right now it's like hard because in California, um, they reopened and it's, you know, the, everything's spiking back up again. And so, yeah, you know, it's just pushing things further and further back. And it's, yeah. it's hard to watch and it's hard to kind of sit back to back. And as a, you know, music being the, lo- the lowest priority, live music being the lowest priority, in, at least in California, mm-hmm. um, it's hard, you know, watching, watching people go out and essentially just push back everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I feel like everything reopened way too soon and we were in too much of a hurry to get back. And now everything is, like you said, spiking up. I just feel like we need to be, it's hard, but we need to be patient and it will go down and then we can get back out there. Yeah. I mean, you look at, you look at all the, every other country that, you know, what they did and they just held on and they, they quarantined and they just were strict and did it. And mm-hmm. I, I, it's a, it's, an, it's such an American mentality to, to kind of fight that, fight that, and and uh, I know I know there's a, 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 a number, of, you know, a, a certain amount of fatigue, you know, and that's what happens. And I understand that, but it's, you know, all the people need to realize that it's, they're, it's all they're doing is pushing everything further and further, and further back, and making it a longer process when you do that. Mm-hmm. It's kicking a scab. I know it's kind of gross, but it's true. It's like yeah. you just kind of you're kind of detrimental to the healing of the whole of the whole process so um yeah i mean well hopefully you know it, it, like i said it, it, it's allowed us to be a little bit like, more creative and you know we're finding the avenues to reach out to our fans and um hopefully that we can keep keep finding new ways and and uh ultimately um it ends up being that positive 